Now the chain is arguably the most important part of your bike because without it, you're going nowhere. Unless of course you're at the top of a descent and your destination's at the bottom. But as long as you've got a chain breaker device on your multi-tool, we can get you fixed and back on the trail. I'm going to show you two methods. One is with one of these quick release connectors. The other, if you don't have one of these, we can reuse a pin in your existing chain, but it's only a temporary fix, but it will get you back home. So if you're joining your chain with a fresh joining link, you're going to need either end of your chain to be an inner because your joining link is effectively a replacement outer. Now on my chain, I've broken one of the outers. So all I need to do is take that broken outer out and replace it with the joining link. If you've managed to damage more than one of those links, then you're gonna to need to take pretty much all of those out and make sure you finish on two inners. So this is the chain breaker part of my multi-tool. I'm just gonna wind it out so there's space for me to insert the chain. Now I wanted to break at this link. So the link that I'm going to break is the one that I put in the little rest here, maybe a little bit fiddly. I like to twist it in just so it's nice and snug. And then the multi-tool is going to wind in and completely break the pin in the center out. So you're gonna to have to keep winding until the pin has completely fallen out the other side and you've disconnected the damaged outer link. So I'm now left with two inners. We can connect this back on the bike. Now, before you put your chain back on the bike, you need to do a few things. Uh, one is to take off this clutch lever. If you just pop it downwards, it should say off. That'll make it easier to manipulate the derailleur at the back here. And if you just move it away from the cassette and shift down, into your hardest gear, so your smallest cog at the back of the cassette. That will just give us a short chain path for us to put it back on in a second. If you have a SRAM derailleur, you can actually manipulate the derailleur arm all the way forward and there should be a little button to press to keep that arm down, which will make it a lot easier when you come to thread the chain. So next up, you just wanna check the direction of your chain. Sometimes you'll actually have arrows written on the chain. So the direction that the chain will go in is to the right along the top, around the cassette and to the left along the bottom. If there's no arrows, you'll probably just have branding, which is usually on the outside facing you. So I like to measure it up a little bit, have about a third, just enough hanging over either side drop it over the cassette and then go onto the smallest cog at the back. And then this is the fiddly part. You basically want to thread it through the derailleur so it goes above over the top of your top jockey wheel. And then it needs to go through the arm, the center of the arm on the derailleur. Now, bear in mind, you have a little bridge here, which you need to be on the left-hand side of. So you just pull it through there, make sure it's on the left-hand side of that little bridge. And then you're going to need to go around the bottom jockey wheel. So we need to thread that through the bottom of the derailleur. You almost need three hands for this. Thread it through and then just re release the derailleur. So now we just need to thread it through the front chain. So if you've got one of these chain guides at the front here, you're going to need to thread it through, maybe pedal it round for you. And then hope that it kind of rests there because often these pedals can move and the chain will fall out. So if you're lucky to not have one of these little things on your multi-tool, that will hold your chain together while you fit the quick link. 
So if you just hook it into your chain, get the other side of the chain, and you may have to give it a good pull so the derailleur moves, then you hook, hook it in together. Just keeps your chain together while you check the direction on your quick links. So remember, this is the path that your chain will be traveling in. It goes around the cassette at the front and then left. So your front one needs to be pointing left. So give it a bit of a tug and get the pin to go into the bigger hole on either side of the link. So make sure they're in nice and flush. You'll see that the pin is almost in the center of the hole or even on the inner side of the hole. Best way to click this into place if you don't have a set of link pliers is to cycle the pedals backwards until the link is at the top of the chain path. And then get your pedal forward, put the brakes on and apply pressure to the pedal. So your quick link is in place now. And all you need to do is make sure you put your clutch back on and you should be good to go. Now, if you only removed one damaged link and you've replaced it with your quick link, then you're good to go with that chain for the rest of the life of the chain because it's back to size and it's full strength. But if you have removed more than one chain link, so maybe two or three, Bear in mind that that chain is now shorter and possibly too short for your bike and it could put stress on the derailleur if it overstretches. So you may have to avoid using the lower gears, um, your easiest one or two at least on your way home. And I would invest in a new chain when you get back. So for method two, you're going to reuse one of the pins in your existing chain. Now, bear in mind that this is a temporary fix. Your structure will be completely compromised from doing this and you'll need a fresh chain when you get back home. And when you break the link, if you bear in mind that the two ends are going to need an inner and an outer to fit back together. So bear that in mind when you're getting rid of the damaged links and choosing the link that you're about to break. So I've already got an inner here, so I need to make sure I finish on an outer. So if there's one link damaged here, we're gonna finish on this outer link. So this is the link that I want to break, and that's the link I'm going to put into my chain breaking device. Just rest it in the center, and then start winding it through. Now bear in mind with this method, you're going to reuse the pin that's inside this chain, so you don't want it to come all the way out. So get the link that you want to break into the rest and start cranking the pin on your chain breaking device in towards the center of the chain pin. And we're going to break this pin out, but not all the way. So once it's snapped, it will start to come out, but you really need to be sure that you don't push this pin all the way out. You may need to do a little bit of winding and then take it off and have a look just to make sure you don't push the pin all the way out. So take it off, check to see if you can get the pin off. If you bend the chain out towards the pin, it should snap off. So you should be left with just at least a millimeter of the pin so that we can push this back in. So first things first, you want to switch off your clutch, which is this lever down here on the derailleur. And that just makes it a little easier to manipulate the derailleur when we come to thread it through. You're also going to want to shift down into your hardest or your smallest cog here at the back, just so we have a short chain path to work with as well. If you have a SRAM mech, you can actually manipulate the derailleur forward and press a little button to keep it into place and that will just make it a little easier to thread it in a second. If your chain has arrows on it, then it's directional. So you want to put the arrows in the direction that the chain will be traveling. So that is right along the top, around your cassette and left along the bottom. If you don't have any arrows, chances are any branding usually goes 
on the front facing yourself. So you're going to rest your chain on the smallest cog at the back of the cassette. Bear in mind that now you've pulled a pin out, it may be a little difficult to thread it through. If it is, you can just work backwards from the bottom. But I find it easier to use gravity and just slot it through the top of your top jockey wheel and roll that through. Then if you just manipulate the derailleur so it's down and you want it to go through the center of the arm here. So if you have a little bridge, then you're going to need to thread it through there. So to the left of the little bridge. If the pin's in the way, it won't thread through your derailleur. So you might have to work backwards so that you've got a nice narrow part. So if you wind it round the bottom jockey wheel and make sure it goes up through the bottom of your derailleur here. Pull that up through. Get yourself enough chain through here. And then it's going through the center of the arm. Make sure it's to the left of this bridge here. But you can thread it through just for now over the top of it. Then it needs to go up and over the top of the jockey wheel at the top here. Then make sure it's above any parts that are sticking out from your derailleur at the back here. Pull it through a little bit and drop it over the smallest cog on your cassette at the rear. If you need to pull some more slack through, you might need to lift it off the cassette and pull it through and then lay it back down. So now we just pass the chain through either if you have a front derailleur or a chain guide at the front, pass it through that and then just kind of pedal it round so you've got enough slack to work on your connector at the bottom. So this is the fiddly part because you're going to have to go against the resistance of your derailleur to connect the chain back together. I quite like putting my knee on the derailleur just to keep it forward so you've got a bit more slack to work with. And basically you need to wiggle the chain until it goes back into place like so. So you just want to use the chain breaking device to crank the pin right back into the chain so it's nice and flush. And once it is, just wind it back out, release the chain and give it a good wiggle to make sure that it's not too stiff. Otherwise that's going to cause some problems when you start pedaling. So all you have to do now is switch your clutch back on and get your derailleur back to how it was before. Now do remember that this is a temporary fix. So you're going to want to get a new chain when you get back home. Also, if you've taken a couple of links out, maybe three or four as well, then you're going to have to avoid using your easiest gears at the back, maybe at least the first two cogs because your chain is a lot shorter and it might overstretch your derailleur. So you don't want to make that expensive mistake. Hopefully that was helpful for you and you're now back on your way on the trail. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you've got any ideas on how we can further help you with any other trailside maintenance tips, then let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.